This video is going to be very different and a very different subject than what I've been talking about. But I wanted to talk about something rather miraculous that happened to me on Pentecost. And I was not expecting this to happen. First of all, I was not expecting to drive to another part of town, clear across town. I was not expecting to even be there. Um, it was kind of a last minute thing and I was trying to get a little plant and thought that I'd go to the hardware store down there at the last minute. So that's the only reason I was there. The minute I got there, they were closing. So I couldn't go in and look to see if they had this little vegetable plant. Um, many of you have heard about the food shortages coming and it's good for everybody to just kind of prepare their own families for any kind of emergency like that. But what I want to talk to you about, this has to do with my mother who you know passed away. There were places that I went with mom, um, places we used to eat together, places we used to hang out together, and you know we did this for years and we had certain booths we liked to sit in and certain places against the windows so we could look outside the windows. Um, and I thought, well, since the hardware store just closed, I'm down here, I might as well eat at this restaurant where mom and I ate and just have dinner. So it's one of the few places where you could eat a turkey dinner. So all of Pentecost Day, it was a sunny day, not raining, not thundering, not cloudy, very sunny and actually very hot. And you know, I was just kind of trying to spend my day just looking at plants and flowers and just trying to enjoy the day, you know, and thinking about the Lord, thinking about the miracle of the flaming tongues of fire and the rushing mighty wind that came upon the disciples of Jesus in Jerusalem. And that was such a profound event that allowed the gospel to go worldwide eventually person by person. You know, it's interesting to me, have you ever thought about this? Why did God do it that way where he had just a few disciples and they went into all of these places preaching the gospel? He didn't wait until technology had the World Wide Web and then suddenly give the gospel out at the end, you know, and then it was an easy thing where people didn't have to try to, you know, do any work to try to get the gospel message out. Instead, you know, he did it when it was more of a primitive situation. He didn't wait till the technology boom and then give the gospel and the gospel would have gone to the whole world instantly through the internet and anybody would have had you know, access to it. So I think that's kind of an interesting thought, you know, and understanding why he did it the way he did. Um, he just wanted the love of God to spread with it, you know, and to reach people's hearts. A lot of times when you're on the internet, there's not a lot of heart involved. It's more of an intellectual thinking, you know, oh, well, that's interesting and people don't realize that people died and shed their blood you know through all the trials and tribulations that Jesus disciples went through and then through the centuries various you know missionaries various people that were just sharing the good news that the Lord had reversed the curse of death and now God was going to take us back into the Garden of Eden like state for eternity if we accept his covenant in his blood and that's the only thing that can save us is God redeeming us himself so he is our Joshua our Yeshua our salvation and he became our Yeshua 
And it says that very clearly that God became our Yeshua. In my book, The Almond Tree, Aaron's Rod, The Messiah, King of Israel, and on the back cover, I showed these gorgeous double rainbows that used to come over our house. And ironically, when I got to the part about the Jesus boat, where they found that first century boat that was submerged in the mud in the Sea of Galilee, or Lake Kinneret as it's sometimes called, they called that the Jesus boat. And when they discovered it, the gentleman that was working on the dig asked God's permission to touch it. Israel had been in a huge drought for about four years and it was no rain coming down. As soon as this man touched the boat, a double rainbow appeared over the lake. It was such a phenomenal miracle. And within just about a minute or two of him touching the boat, heavy rain started to just come down from the sky and the drought was banished with this rainwater that came down and completely changed the whole terrain of the drought, you know, that had infected the land. And it was just so incredible. Um, while I was editing that part of my book where I talked about that in the Jesus boat, every time I would get to that part of editing, I would see the sky change outside the window and I couldn't really see really left or, or I would say east and west because the window was facing south. But I could see the color of the sky change well, the sky would suddenly change and I'd be like, oh, I got to know that there's a double rainbow out there. The pattern of when the rainbow would appear, but both times when I got to editing that section, there was a double rainbow that went over my mom's house. And I tore down the stairs, got my camera, took pictures of these double rainbows. It was fantastic. In fact, all my life, I've never seen such vivid, incredible rainbows. And so, Unfortunately, they're in black and white inside the book, but on the back cover of my book, you can see those rainbows. So what happened to me this Pentecost, Shavuot, really astounded me. And I've had other miraculous events happen like this that I have not talked about regarding my mom, you know, who passed away in 2018. So the story goes like this, that I, at the last minute, decided to go to the other end of town and eat at this restaurant after the store was closed. And I thought, well, I'm down there, might as well eat there. Well, Mom and I used to eat there um, many, many times together. So I have such memories of that. So when I walked into the restaurant, um, I asked them, can I sit way over there where the windows are? Because I wanted to sit in the booth that Mom and I sat in. Unfortunately, that booth was dirty, so I sat two booths down facing that booth. Um, there's times when I really, really miss my mother so much. She was just a daily friend, companion, a blessing. I miss laughing with her, sitting across from her, eating, talking with her praying with her, holding her hand. She would show me some Bible scriptures or share something about the Lord with me. And it was a daily thing. So the more that I sat in the booth thinking about mom and how much I miss her, I started to get tears in my eyes. And I was telling the Lord, Lord, I really don't understand why mom is not here. You know, why you would take her you know, a lot of people say, well, you shouldn't question God. Well, people do. That's just the natural um, human experience, just wondering why these things happen, you know. So I keep a picture of my mom as the screensaver on my phone so that every time I turn my phone on, I can see my mom's face and her picture pops up. So as I was eating and choking back the tears thinking about her, 
you know, I know she's in a better place, so people don't need to write that down. Um, I'm just sharing an experience and a miracle that happened. So I'm sitting there looking out the windows thinking mom looked at all these trees. She saw everything that I'm looking at and it's so strange that she's not here, you know. I'm sitting there eating, looking down at my phone at mom's picture and just telling the Lord how much I miss her. Telling my mom, I really miss you. I want you here. You know, I just pray that the rapture resurrection is soon and all of that. I'm sitting there eating and everything is clear and sunny and everything like that. And as I was thinking those thoughts, I look over out the picture windows and I could not believe my eyes. There was a rainbow arch going from one side to the other and I could see where it started and where it ended. And I'll show you a couple of the pictures that I took out the picture windows on Pentecost, on Shavuot, of this rainbow, God's covenant, appearing in the sky right as I was telling God how much I miss my mom. And to me it was a sign at that he hasn't forgotten about her. He hasn't forgotten about you. He keeps his covenant and he keeps his covenant with the people that love him. So here is this beautiful rainbow. You could see the entire arch outside the window. If I had sat on the other side of the restaurant and had not asked to sit by those windows, that never would have been seen or anything. A little bit of rain came down and it stayed there for quite some time and I was just filming as much as I could, taking pictures. Nobody else in the restaurant even noticed it except the booth behind me. They eventually noticed. But I just felt so blessed by that miracle and the fact that it happened on Shavuot on Pentecost is just telling me in that message that God cares and that he loves us, remembers us, he knows that I'm sad, he knows, you know, my mom, I'm sure she would be missing me and my other family members, you know, um, a lot of people would argue that point too, but uh, I believe it. She didn't even want to be separated for a week from being around me because I was there and I helped her and everything every day. When I finally paid for my meal and went out to my car, part of the rainbow was still there. You know, kind of, I could see the right hand side. I couldn't really see all of the left hand side, but I knew it was coming down there because the people in the booth in front of me, they turned around and were looking back there and they could apparently see the other end of the rainbow. So I thought this was so awesome that I sent a text message showing my sisters that this had happened and what an incredible blessing I was so touched that I just I'm just sitting there with my mouth hanging open like where did this rainbow come from because there's there's not been any rain today at all you know there's not been a storm moving in or anything when I got out to the parking lot, a little bit of rain did come down, but it wasn't much, and then it was gone. And it was just like it had been before. So it just appeared while I was sitting in front of those picture windows. But then what happened next is like God always provides, you know, something that verifies it. Then my sister texted me back that she was outside, and she looked up and there was a rainbow above her. Figured out that it could not possibly have been the rainbow that I saw because I could see the beginning and the end and I was clear up north, way far north. And she was somewhere else and she saw this rainbow and 
there's no way it was the same rainbow. So there were two rainbows right in a row. And then she told me that two doves flew up and landed on the overhead wire. And she took a picture and showed them to me. So I just wanted to show you a couple of pictures of that rainbow and how God brought comfort. And my sister also thought that God was bringing comfort to us. And just a sign, you know, if you're aware of the presence of God's handiwork that's all around you, and you're paying attention to the Lord and you're talking to Him like a friend and in your prayers, in your mind, and you keep close to him and everything, if you pay attention, you'll see that he speaks through everything he created. Um, it was just fantastic. Now, this is not the first time something like this has happened to me. I have a couple of other stories that are very incredible um, regarding my mom. One was pertaining to a dream that came true two days later, and another one was pertaining to asking the Lord if my mom had any idea that I was in Texas remembering her. He gave me an answer. So I'm not going to tell those stories right now because I just want to make this short and I want to show you the pictures of the rainbow. So. I hope you're blessed with this story and the fact that it happened on such a significant time um, when the Holy Spirit came down upon the disciples and filled them with God's Spirit so that they could be a witness to the Lord. And so now, you know, I'm telling this story that God's covenant is forever and He's not going to change His covenants. He has the covenant in the Messiah's blood, reversing the curse of death of Adam and Eve, and bringing us back into the eternal state when the resurrection and rapture happens, and people's bodies will come up out of their graves and be changed, and those who are alive and remain will be changed and be caught up to meet the Lord in the glory cloud, and we will always be with the Lord from that point on. We will never have the separation. And you know the word death means separation. That's one of the hardest things I've had to deal with in losing my family members. Remember last spring, uh, my grandmother passed away. And then her husband, uh, I believe it was early February or early March. And you know, I have all of the story about the two doves, my girls from my home in my book where I talk all about how they would always respond to me and mom whenever we drive up to our house and we would call out to them and they would call back and they'd always do this little ka, ka, ka. <laughs> and it's the uh, Eurasian ringneck dove that makes that sound when they're flying now they make a totally different sound when they're just sitting still in their nest where they do the cooing sound you know that like that. That's what they do. It was so extraordinary that I just was in awe over this happening. It really only showed up as I was saying those things to the Lord. And then it was gone. There was no rain, no rainbow. Now as I headed back towards my end of town, there was a a lot of rain that had fallen in the streets and I saw it had rained down here but up there it was just like where did this rainbow come from <laughs> and then it was just gone quickly you know I mean it was there for a good amount of time but when I got out in the parking lot it was still there with you know the right hand side that I zoomed up on so let me just show you
All right, well, that's what I had to share with you about my Pentecost, something completely unexpected that would not have happened if at the last minute I had not decided to go down to the hardware store and they closed. So I thought, well, I'll just eat down here. If I had not done that, if I had not asked to sit by the picture windows on the other side of the restaurant, I never would have seen a rainbow. But God put everything in place so that I would have comfort and so that I would see it and know that God has not forgotten us and that He sees us and that He loves us most of all. By the way, if you want to read that story, it's in my book, The Almond Tree, Aaron's Rod, The Messiah, King of Israel, about the Jesus boat and the double rainbows and the miracles that took place while I was editing. And um, it's olivepresspublisher.com to order that book. So I hope that my Pentecost Shavuot rainbow that suddenly appeared is going to bless many people that see this and just have hope in their hearts that God loves you. Talk to you soon.